Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back today to do a video on somewhat of a different topic. We're going to talk about how not to get scammed or more accurately, just how to decrease your risk. I'm not going to go into super fine detail on this. There are going to be others that put out more detailed videos than mine. Mine is almost more like those made for dummy books. You know, you don't buy stuff online from the secondhand market and you're just wanting to stick your toes in. What things should you look out for when you are in that position? And I'm gonna talk about Poshmark. I'm gonna talk about Mercari. I'm gonna talk about eBay. And I'm going to talk about Vestier Collective. But before I talk about any of those things, I wanted to let you know that if you haven't followed me on Instagram, please go over there and do that. It's the same name, The Handbag Housewife. And sometimes I will post outfits of the day that I might not post or show here on the videos. And I also post most all of my videos there so that you can click a link and head directly over to YouTube. So if you're already on Instagram, it'd be a great way to get notified if you don't wanna have that bell rung whenever a new video of mine comes out. Okay, so on to the outfit of the day. I put this outfit on briefly yesterday and then all of this stuff happened with anxiety and I ended up just changing and wearing my sweats. And so I did make a post of it on Instagram yesterday. And so I'm not wearing the same clothes twice in a row. I'm just putting them back on to actually wear today, I guess you could say. My bag of the day is this little Coach Quilty camera bag, and it has a strap that is golden, that has a silver leather part with gold hardware, and I have it adjusted right in the middle. So this is how it looks on me. I actually like it even up a little bit shorter. The strap, when you adjust it shorter, you have a bit that hangs over the end. So I'm not sure if I'll adjust it today or not, but this is a pretty good length for a crossbody bag. I'm wearing an Others Follow ribbed tank, and this is just kind of a no-name jacket, but it's super soft. And then I've got some button fly can-can jeans on. So that is the outfit of the day with the Coach Silver Metallic Quilty that holds so much. You would not believe how much this bag holds. I only had to downsize a tiny bit. I took one card holder out and used the card slip that is provided inside the bag. So if you're wondering about capacity and if you have watched my previous videos, this one holds pretty much the same thing as I put in my Longchamp Extra Small bags, but instead of having room, it is literally packed to the brim. I might be able to squeeze my phone in, but I don't think I would try because it's already pretty tight. So I guess it holds that much less. I took a card holder out and stuck three cards in the slot instead of having that. And then it's packed tight enough. I don't think I would put my phone inside. On to the shopping bit. I have two bags that I'm going to use as eye candy today. I just want to show you them because I'm going to kind of use them as benchmarks for what I'm shopping for. I'm gonna be looking for a Pillow Tabby 26. I might pop an 18 in there, depending on what I find, as well as the Longchamp Queer Top Handle Extra Small and the Antique Pink. And there were some cases where I couldn't find very many of the Extra Small, so I actually used a bigger size in my analysis. So without further ado, I'm going to put in the parts that show you how I work my way through the websites. And then I'll come back at the end to sum things up. Okay, we are going to start with Poshmark. I'm going to look for the ivory pillow tabby. I have flagged or given hearts to a few of them that I wanted to show you. Let's look at this one to start with. Now, if you wanna find something out about the seller, you click on their picture in the little circle on the upper left hand corner. Let's do that first. All right, the next thing you want to click on after you've looked to see what their items are that they have for sale would be the about button. Now one thing I noticed 
when I looked at their items that they have for sale, it looks like this person is not a reseller and they are just selling a few items from their own closet. That's my initial impression. When I click the about button, I find out that this person has been a member since April of 2021. So almost a year and they were last active a couple days ago. Those are all good signs. When I scroll down, I look at the love notes. The person has received two and they have only had two sales. Both of their sales have received positive love notes. So I would feel comfortable buying from this person, even though they haven't done a whole lot on Poshmark. They've established themselves with a couple of sales. They don't have repeat items over and over again. And They've been a member for around a year, so it's not like they just joined. Let's look at the listing just to confirm my impressions. They do mention it has a small scuff on the C, so that would bother me. I probably wouldn't buy it for that reason, but they do disclose that, so I like that they are honest. They haven't gotten any comments on the item, but I do always look to see if they respond. If you have an unresponsive seller, that is not a good sign. Let's go to the next seller. Let's look at the photos first this time. If you scroll down and look at their comments, this person has responded to every comment. The only thing that I see that concerns me is they're willing to send pictures via email that's not always a negative thing, but Poshmark does not like communication outside of Poshmark. They're trying to protect you as the buyer because if you make a deal outside of Poshmark, you only have PayPal to protect you, which honestly isn't a bad thing. PayPal does a really good job protecting you as well, but you may get yourself into trouble with Poshmark if you're doing deals outside of Poshmark. I'm gonna click on this person's picture in the upper left-hand corner this person has sold three items. It looks like one of the sales was canceled because it's for an identical item. The lower left-hand corner, you can see. They raised the price by $100 when they did eventually sell it in the copy listing. So they may have been the one to sell it and cancel because they figured they could get more money, or it may have been a case of buyer's remorse or a return. Let's look at the about information. They've been a member for four years. They ship pretty quickly. They were last active 15 hours ago. They do not provide any additional personal information and there's no love notes. So I would say that this person is probably okay since they've had a couple sales with no negative love notes, but not quite as good as the last one that I should. Next, we're going to talk about the last two that I have liked. And if you look, they are the exact same picture, which is a bad sign, especially because they are two different sellers. And let's look at this one. Let's see if we can determine anything from the actual listing that we are wondering about. If you look, there are a few stock photos and a few real life pictures, whether or not they're his or not, we don't know. If a listing ever just has stock photos, I would stay away from that unless the seller is willing to provide pictures of the actual item. When we scroll down and look at the comments, he has not responded and that is a bad sign. So not only has this person become a new member of Poshmark recently, but they have also not responded to any comment on their listing. And it is possible that they stole the photos that are on the listing that appear to be in real life. So I would not buy from this person. Now you may say, what do I do if I look at all this information and I am wrong? I picked the wrong person and I get scammed. Well, Poshmark will protect you to some extent. And what will happen is generally, as long as you've went through the steps that I've showed you, you will receive something 
and then you can contact Poshmark within the first three days and tell them that you didn't get the item as it was described or you didn't get the correct item and then you can get your money refunded generally. They generally side with the buyer. You submit photographs, you, you prove your point, and then they side with you, they send you a return label and you ship it back. Now, the, the trouble lately is with these scam accounts, these fake accounts that people have. Not only can they send you something that is not the correct item, they can do it in a way where it doesn't even go to your address, but it looks like it did. And then, when you don't accept it within three days of its supposed delivery, then they get their money and you're out of the, your money and you're out of the item. There are ways to protect yourself from this and the main one is using a credit card. And then you can file a charge back with your credit card when you don't get the item. You can track the item and when it says delivered but you haven't got it, you can contact Poshmark before your three days are up that you were given to accept the item. But keep in mind that if you're not keeping track of that, once the three days is up, Poshmark automatically accepts that purchase for you. And then you're gonna have to battle with your bank on your side or your credit card on your side. And I have found that the credit card works best or you could even better pay with PayPal, but not use the PayPal credit card, use a different credit card. And then you've got two layers of protection. The final thing I would say, and this would be something I would say for all of the different secondhand sites, is that you should video when you unpack the item. I always video when I unpack the item, you know, because you see the videos. But if you video while you unpack and you clearly show in the video the label that is provided by Poshmark to the seller, then you can prove if what you have in that box is or is not what you were supposed to receive. The only issues I've had with Poshmark purchases have been with condition. And every time that I've had an issue, Poshmark has accepted my return with no question. I had one issue as a seller and the buyer said that the bracelet that I sold them was not as described in that they thought there was a piece missing and there wasn't, it was the hinge and I, found a picture of it on the manufacturer's website. And even though they were very angry, Poshmark sided with me because it was literally the design of the item I sent. So that person kept the item, even though they did not want it. It perhaps was buyer's remorse, who knows. So now I'm going to go on and do Mercari. See you soon. Here I am at Mercari and I have something to show you. I found the actual owner of that photograph that we looked at on Poshmark. When I scroll through the pictures, there it is. Now the Binks looks like it was actually embroidery on some sort of garment that this individual was wearing during the photograph. But if you scroll down, you can find that not only did the other posters copy what this person had written, but that this individual has 163 five-star reviews on Mercari. This is why I like Mercari perhaps better than Poshmark because they do show you the reviews. And if somebody's not happy, you can find out why. So if you look here, the only four-star reviews that this person has gotten had to do with the packaging and maybe a little bit of a disagreement with one buyer regarding the disclosure of some discoloration. And then one buyer who had given a three-star review when they wanted to cancel the purchase and the seller did not want to do so. Now, as a seller myself, primarily through PayPal, I would say you can't expect a seller to cancel a sale just because you changed your mind. 
On Mercari, it's considered a contract with the seller whenever you make a purchase and they are not required to refund you or to cancel the sale. In fact, it makes them look bad if they cancel a sale because there's a percentage that is measured in terms of the total amount of sales versus the total amount of sales canceled. And people who sell a Mercari pride themselves on having no canceled sales, for example. So you're really putting them in a sticky situation if you ask them to cancel a sale. If they don't cancel the sale and they ship the item to you, you could claim that there is something wrong with it and it's very likely that Macari would side with you. And then the seller would have sent you the item and you might do something to it and then you send it back. On the flip side, if they cancel the sale, that hurts the way they look on Mercari. So keep that in mind whenever you enter into contracts on Mercari. Whenever I am selling on PayPal, for example, if somebody did ask me to cancel the sale, I would do it because I would fear that they would say when I shipped the item and they received it, that there was something wrong with it, that they didn't get it, and they would create an issue with PayPal, which I might or might not win. PayPal, like all of these sites, tends to side with the buyer over the seller. And I say like all of these sites, I think the one exception would be Vestier Collective. I think Vestier does their own examination. And once it's past that point, you don't have a lot of recourse. Anyway, we're talking about Mercari now. So when you buy and sell a Mercari, be prepared to stick with your agreement. Once you make an offer, you cannot cancel it. You can reach out to the seller and ask them not to accept your offer. That is one option. And if a buyer asked me not to accept their offer on Mercari, I definitely wouldn't accept it. That's a lot easier to do than to cancel a sale because not accepting an offer in no way makes you look bad. Let's move on and look at Depop next. I have the Depop app pulled up on my phone and I've got some different listings to look at. The first one I'm going to look at is going to show you one that I have concerns over. And that is the antique pink long shot bag that I showed you in the beginning of the video. Now this bag is priced extremely low. That's my first concern. It's listed at $89. This bag retails for $380, so the price is really too good to be true. This bag is also faked quite often, and that makes me nervous to purchase it on the secondhand market to begin with. Some of the more specialized extra small bags that I've bought online from this brand are pretty rare, and they're not likely to have been faked. But these that are in the smooth leather, the Matisse leather, they're a lot more likely to be faked than the more unique alternatives. Let's scroll down and look at this person's information. Ian Kennedy is in New York, and I'm going to look at their sold reviews. They have none. This is something you should always look at on Depop to see if there are any sold reviews. You should also look and see what other items they are selling this person has one other item. It's also very inexpensive, but by a brand I don't know. So in summary, I would not buy from this individual. Let's see if we can find somebody that we would buy from. This person is in Great Britain. And they have the product listed at a very good price, 125 pounds for an all leather bag, of which I know the extra small retails for 380, is a very good price for a bigger bag, which is what this is. Now we see this person has sold reviews and everybody is happy. This is good. They are selling multiple items of which it looks like are from their own closet. We don't see a lot of duplicates, and it looks like this person is mostly selling clothing with a few exceptions. I would feel very comfortable buying from this individual. 
Now, apparently all in-app purchases are covered by buyer protection on Depop. I don't know what that means. I've never had a problem with Depop. Has anybody that's listening to this had a problem with Depop? If so, can you please let me know if it was resolved successfully or if it was hard or stressful to deal with? I would really appreciate it. Let's take a quick peek at eBay before we're all done. I've had some very good luck on eBay as well. Not so much with my handbag purchases, but with many different items. I will tell you if as a buyer you cancel sales or return items too much, that you may have an issue with eBay. I purchased a few items and returned three or four things in a row because I received fakes and I received items that were not as described and ePay actually canceled my account. This was through no fault of my own because I got the items authenticated upon receiving them or discovered errors in the description that were not indicated until I had the item in my hand and could see it. However, eBay looked at my record and despite having been a member for over 15 years, they took a very small snippet of time with a more frequent rate of returns and they canceled me. And I'm not the only one I know of who has had this happen to them. But I did find I was able to open another account in my name with a different email address and have been able to purchase with that account with no issues. Now I know what to look for. I know to get things authenticated before I purchase if I have concerns. And I have managed to avoid making any returns for any reason since I opened my new account. So I would advise you to look carefully because out of all of the platforms that I'm talking about today, eBay was the least friendly to me as a buyer. Let's take a peek at eBay. Now this is an item that is very similar to the antique pink bag that I showed you at the beginning of the video. The seller has it listed for $325, which is not a great price. In fact, you can find one of these in another color of blue on Joma Shop currently for actually about the same price as this one here that you're seeing on the left for $189. That said, let's just go ahead and look at this seller and find out some information about her. When I click on her name, it shows that she has 100% positive feedback. This is a good sign. When I scroll down, you can see her recent feedback ratings. When I click on that, she has all positive except for one neutral. The one person that gave her neutral feedback just said good. So as far as I'm concerned, she has 100% positive feedback. Let's look at the items that she has for sale. She has right off the bat, three long shop bags, some clothes, a Tory Burch bag, et cetera, et cetera. There is nothing here to make me think this person is a reseller for sure, but it's possible because there are a lot of items that appear to be new so this person may be a reseller or maybe is just an avid shopper who's selling items out of their closet. So in a nutshell, yes, I would buy from this person, but not at the price that they are selling this particular bag for. Next, let's go into my watched items and look at one more item, the Pillow Tabby 26 that we have been eyeing on the other resale sites. Now this one is listed for $435, retail is $495, so that's a good price. Let's look at the photos. Now the seller is providing photos of the side, the top, the inside, a little bit of the tag, but they're not showing any photos of the front flap that are very detailed. This one's not bad. In fact, I would feel pretty comfortable buying this bag with the way that the flap looks in this photo. But when you scroll down, you can see that this person has two available. 
So which bag are you getting? Are you getting the one in the photos or are you getting a different one? I would want to know the answer to that question. So I would email the seller and say, do you have pictures of the actual item that I will get? If not, can you get some and send them to me? This person has 100% positive feedback. When we go to the detailed seller ratings in the last year, there's not been one negative or one neutral. So I would feel pretty good buying from this individual as well, with the exception that I would want to see pictures of the actual item. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the pillow tabby has wrinkles often around where the C clasp is on the front. And that bothers some people and other people, it does not bother at all. Me personally, I want my flap to look a certain way, so I would want to see pictures of my actual item. The last app or website I wanna talk about is Vestier Collective. I have had tremendous success buying from Vestier Collective. I do know, however, that there are horror stories about people buying on Vestier Collective and being extremely unhappy. One way I think you can avoid this unhappiness is not to select direct shipping. And that is an option in the United States where I live to do. I'm basically bypassing their examination by doing that. And so far, every examination they have done for me for items that are relatively inexpensive to more expensive items like the Alma BB that I've purchased have been examined very well. In fact, all of the items have been as described except one, and that was the black and white snake Longchamp Extra Small that I purchased. It was missing a strap, which was disappointing, and they did not offer me any sort of a discount with that piece missing. However, they did give me the option to cancel the sale, and I chose not to, so that was my decision. I chose not to because I was paying $209 for a bag that retailed for $500 that was in excellent condition, and in fact, when I got it, it was in new condition. And the only thing wrong was that it was missing a short strap that I probably would not use much anyway. My experiences on Vessier Collective have been very good. I will tell you what I look for. Maybe that is what has kept me out of trouble. But I would advise you, if you are going to start buying on Vestier Collective, to watch other videos where people have had troubles. And that way, perhaps you can avoid the pitfalls that they have faced. That being said, let me just show you what I do when I'm considering a purchase. I'd like to I would like to start by showing you some of these items in my wish list. The first one is an item like the antique pink bag I showed you at the beginning of the video. However, this one is listed over retail of 380. And so right off the bat, I would say I would not buy this bag, but I wanted to show it to you because this item is offered through direct shipping. Now, what does that mean? It means that rather than shipping the item to Vestier Collective to be authenticated and inspected, Vestier Collective is just reviewing the photographs of the item, much like you can do, and they are doing their evaluation that way. So you bypass the expense of having the item shipped to them, but you also sacrifice having them inspect the item. I think this is where most people tend to run into trouble with Vestier Collective. Now, Helen is a trusted seller. Let's look. She has sold six items. If you look at the types of items she has, she's got clothes, she's got handbags, and that is a good sign too. I like seeing when people are selling out of their closet. I feel like it reduces the chance that they are selling a fake counterfeit item because it's something that they bought for themselves and didn't use or did use and grew tired of. I would trust Helen, but I would be nervous about the direct shipping. So that's my thoughts on her, on that. Let's look 
at another example. Now this particular item is from a seller named Mike. I actually just bought an item from Mike. His item, you do not have a choice if you buy it whether or not it gets sent to Vestier Collective for inspection. He has sold eight items, so the threshold must be relatively low for whether or not you are an expert seller versus a trusted seller. But you can see he is one who's probably went to the outlets or gotten sales at the stores and then is reselling on Vestier Collective to make a profit because pretty much all of his items are long shop. That said, he's not selling eight of the same bag, which might indicate to me that he it has counterfeit items. And most of these items that he has are higher price points, like this one, for example, retails for 500 and he sold it for 369 So he's not selling the nylon ones for $59. He's selling, for the most part, the higher expense items. And even though these Pokemon ones are not as high of a price point originally, they get marked up just because of the fact that they're Pokemon. So I obviously already did trust Mike, and I am confident that quality control will evaluate the bag that he sends to them and make sure that I get what I paid for. And if not, they'll send it back to him. Let's look at the antique pink one, just like the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. One thing to note when you're searching Vestier Collective is you see here, this bag is called the Pliage Leather Tote. Vestier Collective sellers are very bad with their descriptions. When you were searching on here or on Depop, those two sites in particular, you need to get creative with what you type in the search bar. The extra small bags are referred to as minis, extra smalls, sometimes simply longchamp crossbody, sometimes pliage leather tote, all different sorts of things and all different sorts of ways that you can search for them. Now Linda here, let's click on her. I'm sorry, not Linda, Lydia. She has sold 27 items and she has 10 items for sale. To me, at a glance, she's selling a various assortment of bags and wallets. She may be selling for a friend as well. It's sort of hard to determine if Lydia is a reseller or not. But again, unless I'm seeing 19 of the same exact nylon long shot bag, it doesn't really worry me too much if they are a reseller. And the only other thing I would say to look at would be the comments. And she doesn't have any comments. And so as far as Lydia goes, the fact that she's missing the trusted seller or the expert seller icons makes me wonder a bit. But... Vestier Collective is going to authenticate this item. And so my primary concern with it, if it was fake, would be that it's not leather. It's not the Matisse leather. But since the Matisse leather has a scent to it and it smells of leather, I think that Vestier Collective would be able to pick that up. Last but not least, when you're looking for the Longchamp Extra Smalls, I don't know if you can see this, but at the height, it's 6.7 inches. These bags are 6.75 inches, and if you're looking for that size, sometimes they're called mini, sometimes they're called extra small, but you just always wanna make sure they're 6.7 or 6.75 inches. So in a nutshell, those are some of the tips and tricks I use when I am purchasing on Poshmark, Mercari, Depop, Vestier Collective, and eBay. I've been relatively successful, especially of late, in buying on all of these sites. When I sell, I tend to use PayPal and I list an item on Facebook groups 
that I am a member of for various brands. And when I sell, I do a PayPal invoice. And also when I buy on these Facebook groups, I also generally pay with PayPal invoice. PayPal invoice is very friendly to the buyer, more so than to the seller. So as a seller, I have to take more precautions than I do as a buyer. And some of the precautions I take are that I look up the person's name who is purchasing from me. Because on Facebook, if you do a search of an individual, you can often find if there have been issues within the groups that you're a member of with that individual. You simply go to the groups tab within your Facebook app and you can do a search up at the top and then select group posts. And you will see all the activity that person has had in any group that you are a member of. The other thing I do is I ask the person to provide me with their mailing address. I also share with them that I will only ship to a PayPal mailing address and that I'm asking them for their address so that I can verify that they match. This is all true, but I also do a Google search on their address. And if I'm selling a bag that's $2,000, let's say, and the individual lives in a falling down shack, I don't ship the item to that individual. I do these small things to protect myself because every time I sell on PayPal invoice or on any of these sites, I'm taking a risk. I would say the least risky place for me to sell would probably be Vestier Collective because once they've done their inspection and the buyer receives the item, I am off the hook because they know what I sent and they will stick up for me. However, I haven't sold much through Vestier Collective. I haven't sold it all through them. It might be something that I look into in the future. With the new tax laws that are in place in 2022, making it so where every seller who sells more than $600 on any one platform gets a 1099, I am not selling anymore. At least I should say I'm not selling much anymore. I have one item listed for sale, but at the end of last year, I looked really hard at what I had and I sold several things at a loss because I wanted to move them out of my closet and not have to prove to the government that I was losing money, which I did. Now I'm very happy with almost everything I have. And if I sell something, it's going to be far and few between. So my days of excessive buying and selling, at least the selling part, are over. And I hope all these tips and tricks have helped you. I know it's been a very long video, but it's a scary world out there, especially as a seller, but also as a buyer. You've got to know what to look for so that you don't create major anxiety and headache for yourself having to deal with fighting battles that you don't need to fight about handbags. If you have enjoyed this content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, comment with any questions, or even if you just want to say hi. Take care and have a wonderful day. I'm Erin and my channel is The Handbag Housewife.